Good morning. This is a very unusual time. Uh, we uh, had a case of coronavirus, so uh, we uh, didn't have people indoors this morning, uh, but we are going to try to live stream and also broadcast on the radio. So we got folks out in the parking lot. Hopefully we have some folks that uh, are going to be uh, uh, watching the live stream. So uh, what we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to, uh, instead of the singing, we're going to have uh, Mel play some music, said the Christmas music. It's the first time we've had the Christmas music in, uh, uh, in worship, uh, and so we didn't want to miss that. Is it not playing? Well, for those outside, we're trying to get the, the live stream going, uh, and so we're having some difficulty. Uh, I think the best thing to do may be to have Mel. Can you play a little bit more of the prelude? Mm -hmm. So we're going to be uh, proceeding with our worship service. Uh, we'll be uh, recording this uh, for later on uh, to put on uh, Facebook. Uh, so uh, we had a little problem. But we begin the Advent with the outlining of the Advent wreath. As we gather around the Advent wreath today, we are conscious that we live in a world too often devoid of peace. And that even as people, we frequently find ourselves restless and frantic. The second candle of Advent reminds us of peace, of him who comes to the world as the Prince of Peace. We read from Isaiah, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. His authority shall rest upon his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Almighty Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. We light this candle of peace for our assurance that the swords will be turned into plowshares, that discourse will be transformed into harmony, and that the peace of the Christ child will rule in our hearts this day. Let us pray. Prince of Peace, you come to us in the form of a child, in the weakness and vulnerability of an infant. Your lovely birth, lowly birth, reminds us that peace comes to us when we throw off our arrogance and put on instead the cloak of humility. May we have the courage today to, uh, to discard our petty differences and to bury our long-held grudges as we worship you, the child of the manger. be leading the 
worship service from down here because it just seems like a, a less formal thing to do as we uh, have a vacant church here today. Uh, so I'm going to read for us the call to worship. The day of God is coming. Lift up your voice. We wait God's coming in into, with anticipation. We seek the peace and patience God provides. God will feed us like a shepherd. God will gather us in gentle, caring arms. God's hand is upon us in blessing, and we are welcomed into God's steadfast love. Let us pray. Righteous and holy God, your glory is revealed to us day by day as valleys of despair are lifted up and mountainous problems are leveled. In your presence, we see more than our immediate situation. We catch a glimpse of your eternal purpose. So come among us now and speak your word of peace. Feed us with your truth and equip us to welcome Christ's coming. Amen. Continue coming to us in our need. These days are challenging, especially for those who do not have the resources and support system that they need. Help us to move our focus away from ourselves and put our attention on those who need it the most. We pray for those among us who suffer, especially for those who have lost people closest to them Put your arm around them and let them know that they are not alone and that life is worth living. We pray for the church that we may find ways to be the body of Christ, even when we can not follow the usual patterns of worship and study and service. May we come out of this time of trial stronger rather than weaker. We pray this in the name and the words of the one who called us into being when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's hear this word from the uh, 
prophet Isaiah. Fortieth chapter, the first verse. Comfort, O oh, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. When the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I say, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flower fades. Then the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flowers fade, and the word of, the, of our God will stand forever. Get to you up to the high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice and strength. O Jerusalem, herald the good tidings, lift it up, and do not be afraid. For the cities of Jerusalem, for Judah, the, here is your God. See the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rule. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his sheep like a shepherd. He will gather the lamb in his arm and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother's sheep. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, let's just play those hymns. <clears throat> sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way the voice of one crying out in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord make his path straight John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins and the whole people from the whole uh, Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and being baptized by him in the river Jordan confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel hair and a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. For about uh, 10 years as a boy and about 15 years as an adult, I was involved in the Boy Scout program. 
Now, I know that they're in a lot of trouble now, but uh, I didn't experience any of that. Uh, what I experienced was an organization that was first rate and taught me some skills that I can still use in life. Some very practical skills like not tying. I can still tie things pretty securely today. Uh, how to build a fire. I put, you put that to use also. Uh, how to, uh, uh, to be safe. How to put up a tent and sleep on the ground. Well, I have to admit, I haven't done that much lately. But it taught me some more important things than that. Uh, it taught me how to do teamwork. It taught me how to get by with the very least you can get by with, uh, to not depend upon things. Uh, it taught me uh, the respect for the environment. It taught me uh, the importance of traditions. Uh, the scout motto, the scout uh, uh, law and the uh, scout oath, I think I can still do a pretty good job, come pretty close to reciting those. But the one that everybody remembers, because it's so easy, is the scout motto. Be prepared. Preparation has a lot to do with what happens in any event. When we were ready to go camping, we had to be prepared. We would plan the menus, we'd go and get the food, we'd make sure the trailer was packed with all the things that we needed for the camping trip. Uh, because when we were prepared, the trip went just a whole lot better. You even anticipated that which you didn't know might happen. Uh, like when you set out your camp, you made sure in case there was a, a thunderstorm during the night that you wouldn't be washed away. Preparation was important. Be prepared. I think that's what Isaiah is telling us this morning. Be prepared. You remember that the people were in exile because the Babylonians had overrun their country. They had done made war uh, and taken them into the Hebrew people into slavery. And I can't even imagine the trauma that they went through. Uh, that they, they lost their friends and neighbors. They were lost their homes. They lost their freedom. They were taken into a strange land and enslaved and had to do what other bid them to do. Now Isaiah spent the first part of his book talking about if you don't straighten up some terrible things are going to happen and you would be very tempted if I was Isaiah at that point to say see I told you so. Something terrible is going to happen now you have to live with it. Instead he has a new message of hope. Be prepared. Be prepared for that which is coming. God is going to do a great thing. God is going to make surprise everyone that one that seems distant and unseen will become near and seen by everyone. The doubters will no longer be able to doubt. The totters will no longer be able to make fun of the people who believe because God will be so real. And the barriers that are between Babylon and Jerusalem will be made smooth for a road back home. You see, the people who would look out on the desert and see the mountains and see the valleys and see how impossible it was to cross those over, over and fall into despair. But they're going to be made straight. The valleys will be made lifted up. The mountains will be brought down. Uh, that is good news. Uh, our pandemic and our economic problems will be to go away someday, but they felt hopeless, and this was a word of hope. Be prepared because God is going to do something great. And then Isaiah said to a, a, a voice coming to him and says, Cry, and said, What shall I cry? He said that all life is grass. Now that doesn't seem like a very positive note. Uh, you know, we're all going to die. <laughs> that all things are temporary. But on the other flip side of that is that all those opposing forces, all those uh, things that keep us down are also going to go away. That nations rise and fall, that the world changes. 
that nothing is permanent except God. God is going to outlive the trouble. God is going to live, go longer than uh, uh, the pandemic or the econ economy. God's going to go longer than the nation of Babylon. What's permanent is life and love. What is permanent is hope. What permanent is God's consistently coming to the people when they have their greatest need. That's the, what's consistent. That's what's going to endure. Everything else will change, but God will remain the same. And as we remain connected to God, we too will have that, uh, uh, that touch of eternity. Now, uh, what Isaiah says to how to be prepared, basically, if you read this text, it says, look and listen. Look at what God is doing and what the places where the kingdom is rising up, where, where the good things of God come bubbling up to the surface, and then join in. And look, look and listen to what God is saying in God's word. God consistently comes to people when they have their greatest need. And he rescues people all through the Bible uh, that you can depend upon God uh, to come to your aid, to come to our aid. The best thing to do is be prepared for the mighty thing that God is going to do. Now, I think John the Baptist also says be prepared. Now, it's a different conqueror. This time it's the Roman Empire. Uh, but it's, it's a similar kind of trouble that the Hebrews find themselves in, uh, and they distress over uh, what has become of their world. And John stands in the wilderness as one in the, in the school of Isaiah and Elijah and says, repent, because some, God's going to be doing something good. Align your life with the way that God is so that uh, you'll be ready for when the kingdom comes. Now, John didn't live long enough to see all the things that Jesus did, but he had a hint from the baptism that this was the one who was coming to do something great on behalf of God. If he lived long enough, he would have seen where the, the kingdom sprouted forth when, when Jesus healed, when he did miraculous things, when he, when he taught the wisdom of the, of the ages, uh, when he expressed the love of God, when he included the excluded, the kingdom burst forth because God was doing a new thing. So we can celebrate the birth of Christ because it's Christ coming to us once more that God is coming once more to do something great, that God will outlast the trouble, that God will send a Savior to come and to make it right with us so that we can see the kingdom come. So to be prepared, we need to look. We need to look and see what is uh, kingdom worthy, that which is building life, that which is building love, and join in into those times. We need to listen. Listen to the word of God and listen to God's faithfulness and God's love. And then align our lives with that which is coming. We need to be prepared. Christmas is coming. Christmas is coming again. It's not just an ordinary time. It's the time that God touched the earth and everything was different. God will do it again. We need to be prepared. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, As we uh, affirm our faith, as we listen to the words of God uh, in the scripture, in the prayers, in the music, uh, we uh, affirm our faith. And so uh, I want to ask the people out in the cars to stand up, uh, but uh, let's uh, affirm our faith. Let's, uh, if you have a hymnal, it's number 881. believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life. Christ brings hope for true peace to all people. 